Welcome to the channel. Today I'm gonna be redesigning High Guardian Spice characters. Now if you guys are wondering why am I doing this, it's because 1. I'm bored. 2. I'm so salty about how this turned out and how the hell did you mess up this genre like everyone's doing and how? Just how? A lot of people said that they really like the art because uh, it's kind of a mixture of anime and cartoon and like uh, it claimed to be for mature audiences and it literally looked like a show from uh, a nine year old like can watch this and it claims to like be for adults only which is kind of stupid so I'm gonna redraw these characters in a more anime style and change them to look more than what this is and turn them into something more interesting so you can find out their character traits. I'm going to be filming traditional and digital art. While I'm talking, I'm probably going to be talking about how the characters' new personalities will look like and how the plot be and rant about how could this could have been done better. Anyway, let's go. Okay, so the first character is Rosemary. Rosemary is supposed to be the bubbly, slightly idiotic, and uh, a fighter, the main character of the series. Now, I don't really have a personal problem with her design. The only thing is the fact that it doesn't really fit the theme that they're going for because mature audiences, as they said so. So, uh, my uh, idea for this design was to like uh, keep it a little bit similar, but like add some elements to make it look more mature like for example she looks too much of a like this happens with like all the characters but like they don't really look like they're from an anime and uh like if this was an anime you could just like uh improve their body proportions a little bit if you know what i mean i don't really know how uh, this so uh she's 14 years old but honestly, at first glance, she looks like she's 11 years old. And for a person who's protagonist, who's also 11 years old, it's also kind of strange that like she looks younger than they should perceive. So to make her look more mature, her hairstyle got changed to make it more droopy, like and long and more flowy. Because having poofy hair, like it isn't that bad. But the thing is. To get the childness out of it, like the ch the babyness out of it, I made her have very long droopy pigtails and like her bangs just are a little bit longer. Like in the edges of her bangs, you can just have very swoopy strands of hair just flowing around. So she could still have the hairstyle, but it's more droopy and more longer because uh, there's this technique. I found out on um, Pinterest or some other random thing in my journey from designing characters that if you want to make something seem like it's bubbly and happy but like there's dark stuff going around, you can make everything just droop down to make it more realistic. And then uh, if you want to make it like uh, more bubbly, you can just make it more fl more. Uh, poofy and the other but I don't know how it this but like you basically what I'm trying to say is uh try to droop down a little bit to make it more theme based like if it's for mature audiences now uh for Rosemary her dress I basically changed it a little bit by making like the white bits go down along with the skirt it's kind of like what i've done for one of my characters in my comic and uh it contrasts with like the dark and the and the white it makes it look cool and uh personality so this personality of rosemary could be done pretty easily like it could be fixed i don't really know how much of a problem they had writing this character like 
she can be like herself yeah she can be bubbly and uh lively but like at some moments even when she's alone or something she can like be extremely depressed or something or like unsettled because uh her mom is missing and all the drama is going on like we don't really see how much she's going because she hides it with her big bubbly personality and uh she although she kind of causes a lot of trouble she does care about her friends in her own way like uh you know when you like friendly stuff and you actually just care about them that tough love kind of way so i imagine that's how she treats sage and uh if she's not like that, she's extremely like depressed, sad, or anything. She kind of just hides it behind her, her liveliness. So, the plot of Rosemary, her family kind of look a little bit forced to be there, so she can like uh, tell us about her missing mother, or like they can tell us, oh yeah, her mum is gone or something. So, uh, I like the story of someone where basically they made her have sword lessons from her mum every morning. And, like, one time the mum didn't come and then she was looking for her. Now, that's a very good one. Credit to that person who made that video because I actually really liked it. So, so she can basically just be looking for her mum in the first episode instead of like being straight to the school like that's more episode two material she can basically just look for her mum and then she bumps into sage like she f bashes into sage while running and looking for her mum and sage is just on the floor and she's like what is wrong with you watch where you're going and then she's like oh i'm so sorry and helps her up and all of that like, that could be a fun way to make the characters meet when they're younger, obviously. And then make a time skip to when they're 14 and they're gonna go to school. Or, it doesn't really have to be a time skip. Because uh, they said that they're childhood friends forever, right? So, like, uh, to mention the bond when they were kids, like, when they're younger. Because if the mom disappeared four years ago, you could just make the story four years ago before, like, in... You can mention all of our stuff and stuff, cramming it in the later episodes. It's that simple. How can you not do that? Anyway, speaking of Sage, I finished Rosemary. Now I gotta do her best friend Sage. Now Sage's character has been butchered so much. Like uh, people always complain about like she was supposed to be like the anxiety shy character but then she turned out to be such a rude person later on every time rosemary hangs out with someone else like it's like a toxic friendship which the writers do not want to do so i imagine that shage she has a lot of anxiety around like friends in general like she probably had an extremely bad friend once we'll link back to that immediately and then she just has paranoia about the other friend she has rosemary being just like the other form of friend who uh ditched her for no reason and made fun of her so uh the ditching part is the one which uh we're gonna we're gonna look back to so Due to this, she's extremely overprotective about what the hell Rosemary is doing. Not only because she's also a clumsy idiot, Rosemary's a clumsy idiot, she can get into trouble, but then it turns out to be very obsessive and she gets called out for it. That could work, but, had, but uh, it's just like a mistake that they've done made everyone think something else design wise sage's k design is apparently extremely plain a lot of people said they was extremely plain now which characters honestly i seem very beautifully designed which characters so like the owl house 
those characters look so beautiful. I didn't even know they were witches at the beginning, but like they're so cool. Like I found the reference of a witch outfit that was similar to the Owl House school uniform. And I wish I could have used that. Because it was so pretty. But I used something else. So she's from which country? So world building elements aside you can just imagine she's having the traditional like uh witch clothes but not traditional i mean like the plain one she has i mean the traditional that's actually interesting and you know, a creative kind of thing so she doesn't has oh wait i can't speak she doesn't really like or is uncomfortable with like people debating about old magic and new magic now this could be changed slightly to be more interesting where basically the rot has some rumors around it basically from the very beginning you mentioned the rot is causing damage and um, it's rumored that it's new magic is caused through it and like there's this side there's two sides between them and then like uh those people have like discrimination, like protest, and all that stuff. Like drama happens around this, and like her family is one of the is one of them that uh, doesn't like new magic at all. But why does she send her to a school which has new magic in it? Well, I can assume that like the school in general could either be two ways. It can be. Basically, when uh, they mention it's for every fight or like all the skill sets, right? So, new magic would be included because it's in Lingoth, which is a city. So, I assume that like it will have more technology and stuff. Uh, the new magic. So, I don't really know how to build this up because the way they done it was so messed up somehow like it can't be cleaned up but what i imagine is that the school isn't really specific on what type of magic they use it's because it just says all skill sets just like when you search up a review and they aren't really specific like no when you search up a random place no such a review then they don't really mention specific thing you want. You have to pray that they have it. And if they don't have it, then that's not too bad. If they do have it, cool. So it could be that the school wasn't specific on if it's new magic or old magic. And I don't think the parents would be involved in them going to the school itself. The children to just decide to go there and apply for them themselves without their parents' permission to make it more tense and interesting. Again, this idea isn't mine. I just like this. I liked it because a lot of people, or some people on YouTube who attempted to like rewrite this stuff, actually for really interesting ideas, which is really cool. So, if the school isn't specific on the new magic and old magic, Sage who's comfortable with old magic will go there and then everyone's using new magic well the majority is using new magic and then there should be a group of characters who use old magic that have a secret class or like they're just being isolated from everyone like they're ostracized because they they use old magic and then new people the people who use new magic always harass the people who use old magic and then there's a little clash between them right like, that's what I thought. That could be done very easily. As for Sage's hairstyle, I made it more detailed. Like, more style, a big ball of plastic. I just made it look like my, more hair. And uh, made her character more shy. Oh, also, I firstly, I don't really have anything to criticize about her in general because she's honestly one of the most beloved characters that most people actually like but the only thing i would change is for her actual goals and her to stop make her be like a removable disc inside the story where the writers can just remove her or kill her off whenever they want so 
when they meet parsley like uh to fix the locket i assume that they're like they need to it's not gonna be that simple to just get a locket like there's gonna be like get a, i mean get a blacksmith to fix the locket like you can just make them go on the fetch quest where basically they have to find the perfect blacksmith that's suitable to fix the locket. like one blacksmith could be fixing this and then the other one could be fixing that or the money like any random shenanigan and when they finally give up on which one is suitable they bump into parsley which can be more done more interestingly like it can be done in any way possible i'm not gonna really mention it because honestly the book writers aren't really lazy so why do i have to put the effort even if i'm redesigning or rewriting this like uh, I don't really have to pull much of her if it's not really going to be using the next 10 years, right? So, make a random incident which happens, which they meet Parsley. And then, they, Parsley can be like, yo, you know I'm a blacksmith, I can fix that locker for you, right? And he's like, wow, you're a Parsley, you, you're, you're a blacksmith, you're like the same age as how the hell are you fixing that locker and all that? And boom, they meet Parsley. And then you get your, t she can still be the tutorial person. And, uh, you can make her a good character. As for how she wants to go to the school. I think the reason why she got, wanted to go there wasn't because to get a blacksmithing. It's because she wanted to be a fighter. But, like, in order to convince her family that, uh, the school isn't just, like, mess a waste of time on the family business or all that stuff she could say they have blacksmithing which makes me improve my skills i still making her oh she's such a perfect blacksmith like she should make she should like she should make mistakes with it like sometimes she does some stuff wrong and like it's pretty rare for her to get it right so if the family heard that oh the school has blacksmithing she could just go there and she can learn to improve so she can be better for the family business. Adding some conflict while making her more of an interesting character. Now, all of that need to skip to uh, the next character because my footage is just annoying. So, the next character is Amaryllis. Honestly, I would have loved to talk about Parsley's extra design elements that I'd done because... Uh, Is the supposed friend about Sage who basically ditched her and uh, never saw her again and uh, when she came back when they reunited at the Academy basically she's supposed to like bully her not supposed to but like she ends up just being mean to her and say just like, hey, how it's long time no see, how's it going? And all of that stuff. And Emery is just like, ew, you peasant kind of thing. So since Amaryllis is basically rich, she, like, at first there wasn't really that much a cl 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 clash. I, I like to say comped, but I said that. There wasn't that much of a problem between those two when they were kids. But then when they grew up, they realized that the, the Amaryllis was like raised like to be like you, you, this person is like a peasant. So no, you're not supposed to be hanging out with her. She's supposed to be s a slave to you and all that stuff. So uh, that made those two not get along properly. Now, if you thought this is based on like Amy and uh, Willow, not really. I just thought of that because. I literally just go for no reason. So, due to this, Amaryllis has been treating Sage so badly. And, uh, okay, just like in the original, she slightly gets better throughout the whole series. But it's gonna be way slower and like, more developed. So, uh, there's gonna be. Amaryllis is just going to be bullying Sage in general, especially when, like, uh, with the new magic or the old magic debate. And since the fact she lives in which country, and, like, uh, 
these people that are really like those people there don't like the people who do who do old magic so this makes her more intimidating and more like make the audience hate her more she is a little she's she only reason why everyone likes her is because she hates the main character and the main characters are terrible and everyone hates the main characters so that's why so that's the end of this now we're gonna transfer to digital so i can talk more about it the stuff that i wasn't able to talk about also i didn't have time to draw parsley because other stuff happened in my life and uh like i said the writers didn't bother to do anything so even if i want to redesign this i'm just doing it because i'm bored so if i have the right not to be motivated that's not my problem i'm just doing it for fun i don't really have to do whatever the hell i'm supposed to do since no one's gonna really care about this anyway back to digital okay so in this footage i actually didn't really have time to finish everything i was in a limited amount of time to finish so i had to draw amaryllis and time around the, like at the same time i had to draft them but i ended up finishing amaryllis's one later but i finished time's one first so speaking of time i didn't really get to talk about her when i was doing traditional the traditional art for her design i basically just made her hair more long like her hair longer and uh made her wear a little bit like a dress that's uh modest and uh like i don't really know how to say this like it's more simple and modest and like someone that you won't expect to be an archer like that's what my gimmick is for her like she's just this beautiful person this beautiful elf and uh she is her dad is the leader of the village i expect her to be more prettier so but no one really knows that the girl actually does archery she gets archery this is she isn't like this damsel in distress kind of thing so her backstory her new concept for her is basically the rot is destroying everything now unlike in the original where they introduced it later on this is going to be introduced in the very beginning so like the reason why the main characters live in the village is mostly because all all the city like the cities like got affected by the rot and the only city that doesn't get affected by the rot is Lingoth for some mystery reason and uh for whatever reason the the reason why everyone else is like in the village is because of the rot and uh any village like so that's why and like the rot is gonna be extremely different so it's like many bacteria that like uh they're small little meat creatures which feed on stuff which originally was supposed to make it clean but they ended up making it they ended up reproducing more which made them like instead of cleaning everything up they became extremely dangerous but like they eat people alive they eat flesh alive they eat the they they just infect people they just ruin everyone's lives kind of thing so it especially likes to eat forest areas and cities but it's easier for them to digest the forest more because like it's less there's less people and there's like there's less chaos happening although in the city they will get more nutrition because uh there's a lot of people but like it's more like when you have something easy something to help you digest easily like drinking tea kind of that's how i think of it so time times times uh hometown got destroyed and uh while she was running away like she probably was the only survivor or something so the, that made like on the way on the way while she was running a poster ripped off and then uh this idea was in mind credit to the person who made it and uh she found a picture of the the academy now she applied to it not because she wants to like fight or anything or defeat the rock she applied because she didn't have any place to live 
and the the school gets dorms and everything so of all she has to like learn and all that stuff she doesn't really care about it she does her tasks normally but like she mostly does it because she ha wants a place to stay because she doesn't have anywhere to anything where to go back to and she also wants to try and help like try to like recover her home and uh what else speaking of the rock i made the rock look more creepy i wanted to add even more gore elements but i didn't really have time so just live with that so the rewritten version of the story is first of all we're gonna come back to about the rock later on a lot generations ago this bacteria that was made to clean up stuff called was uh, basically what basically went rogue and started eating everything alive or consume or either consuming it or making them go crazy or senile most people escaped from this era to live in the rural areas because unless these things of like not in this large area like or like they're not in a large area they won't be able to like run it over because they have that they're pretty slow they can't really run at sl slow places because they mostly like to use surroundings in order for them to eat whatever the hell they want in that village a girl an 11 year old girl named rosemary usually trains to be a fighter because she had the stories about this and uh, how monsters were created due to a bunch of these things now known as the rot made monsters and entities which go rogue and uh, hurt a lot of people she wanted to fight them and save everyone the people who got robbed out of their homes. Her mum usually would be able her, her mum would usually go outside and uh, on missions related to this thing and uh, she usually comes back. But today she didn't come back. Why? She looked for her and uh, after that she bumped into this girl due to her being so desperate. She literally bashed into this girl who was carrying a lot of books and uh, equipment with her. And uh, thankfully, her, her companion, Nepicat, managed to catch all the fluids and the, the, bottles, the box of the potions she has. But all her books slammed on the floor. Sage. The girl with his name was Sage. And she screamed at Rosemary, saying to her to watch where she's going, and that if Nepicat didn't catch all the potions, she would have been in such trouble, because her mum wanted her to make a potion for her, so she can uh, attempt to uh, do something in order to stop this new magic stuff from occurring. She's unaware of why her mum wants this potion, but she wants it fast. Because if she didn't, she might not be able to see Nepicat again. Or not even Nepicat. She might not even be to stay in her house again. Either way, depends on her getting that potion. Rosemary apologizes. However, she she felt sorry for Sage about what her mum's going through. And uh Decides to help her, like, uh, make the potion so she can give it to her mother. So, the two go to her house. Sage's mum sees Rosemary, and uh, she, at first she's not impressed, but now she is. She is very concerned on, like, Sage being so open to someone. Because uh, the last friend she had left and Sage wasn't the same again. She wasn't able to open up to everyone else. 
because she really cared about that friend. Rose and uh, Sage finally, finally managed to make the potion. And then uh, they give it to her. They, they give it to her mom. Sage's mom, at first, didn't like the new potion because it didn't really follow some of these instructions that she specifically said to Sage to do. However, it performed much better than when expected. So, for a prize, Sage's mother gives gives Rosemary a le a letter. And tells her to open it when she gets home. The friends separate. And they leave. Rosemary goes back home. And opens the letter. To see it's an application form. Of. Of. Uh, the school. Called High Guardian Academy. Where it trains to become guardians. And it specifically. Trains them. To fight the rots. Which she wanted to do all along. She is so happy. She calls Sage. On the phone, I said, and asks her, "Do you want to join this?" Sage is on the Sage doesn't doesn't really think it's a good idea. I asks if her family is allowed it, but Rosemary doesn't care about what her family says, so she tells her that she should sneak out to Lingoth so they can get the school. But Rosemary doesn't know anyone in Lingoth, so what should she do? Sage remembers that her mom t that her mom when her mom was blabbering about how new ma her cousin started using new magic and she became such a disgrace to her family because we, they all lo they all use old magic and like she broke the code and she doesn't really care about the two the two and thinks that they're the, they're the same she started living in Lingoth away from everyone so she can get away from the restrictiveness of her family she decides to call her cousin And tells Rosemary that everything will be fine. They just need to sneak out of their house successfully so they can go to Linkoff. And Sage will contact her cousin to pick them up. And they just pray that they get there safely. They reach the, they manage to reach to the train station after silently, silently sneaking out of their homes. It was very hard for Rosemary to do such a thing, but she knew it was for her friend. However, when they reached this train station, a masked figure appears and uh, tries to take her sage. Rose is in anguish. However, she remembers all the lessons that her mom used to teach her. So, she decides to protect her friend. She manages to defeat the, the person, leaving a very, very deep wound on their shoulder. The person runs away, never to be seen again. The train arrives. They get on. To Lingoth. The journey has just begun. Now that was my uh, mini prologue of the rewritten version of this thing, this series. It's way more interesting. It's way more engaging. It will absolutely link to other characters, like for example, Aster. Yeah, I was planning on the person who's like gonna be in the mask to be Aster, and you recognize him like when they're in the when they're in the school, basically. When he comes inside the school and they're doing the PE lessons, like when he gets outed for being a douche, we basically see the injury that Rose got him. And uh, we find out that this guy is the one who's working for the, the bad guys, the triumvirate, basically. I'm not really sure on how to link the villains to the story but i just really know that i'm probably if i was rewriting this and i was serious about it i would definitely put it at the beginning like probably when they reach the school they're gonna just explain what why is this mid-new camp 
like why is this military camp exists or something like why is the school existed because to defeat the wrong the people are responsible of these guys so you need to be careful or something like that anyway more on amaryllis they actually talk about her design that much but her hair looks extremely flat for a rich person i expect her to be more attractive no offense like she needs to look more glamorous and beautiful kind of thing like, that's what i imagine when i hear of rich rich a rich girl who just bullies people like she at least has to be appeasing to the eye so i made my her hair more flowy gave her bangs gave her a ribbon and made her wear some very like i wouldn't really say extravagant because the thing is i just took inspiration from her actual outfit and made it more like uh noble like well she isn't noble she's really a royal so so i guess because sage they really get the the the, the clothing privileges from amaryllis because they could have just made her character like her the amaryllis outfit just like say like like make sage have a similar outfit to amaryllis because they th that one actually looks like a mini witch well, this one just looks like a witch costume. Honestly, you could argue that Amorosa's one does also looks like a costume, but like, at least it looks more visually appeasing to me. So, I didn't actually know what color to make her, but I thought of making a red and I made a light, a light purple because it made more sense in my color scheme. So, I really like how this one today was actually my favorite one out of the lot because I just liked how I drew her hair. So the conflict between Amaryllis and Sage basically is that one likes new magic and the other one and thinks that the other one who's using old magic is stupid. Now, the conflict of how the new magic's the reason why the rot is happening could be it could be altered by basically the reason why Lingoth basically doesn't get affected by the rot is because they they're the one who caused the rot. And uh, in order for that, to ha like, they have a connection to which country, and they use it as like trade. Like, I don't know how was the geographical term. They use it as like a for free trade. So basically, when uh, they just use it for money, like they just use it for like like international imports and exports or something. Like, pff, I forgot the term, but the. The Terra Spheres, the new magic, like in the Terra Spheres, basically, they cause the rot. So in order for that to happen and like affect more people, they they make everyone buy Terra Spheres, which uh, like the show said, drains the magic out of the earth and causes those bacteria to exist. And uh, it continues to have more destruction outside of Lingoth, like for the the very woods. And the only two places were all Lingoth and uh, which country. And I imagine there's like a contract between the two. Where like uh basically like if they don't if they don't follow the contract basically they can reverse the they can reverse the contract like they do Uno reverse on the contract and like make all the all the like the, the mini bacteria of the road just kill everyone. Like, something like that. Like, what can you think of us? Actually, like, that's actually something that came out of the top of my head. I didn't, really, I didn't really force it into it. Like, you could have just made it extremely easy. And, like, how? I don't get it. Oh, another, another thing I would actually want to add here is that they can make terror spheres. But if Terra Spheres, like, new magic can do anything as they claim, like, we need to erase that conservation because that won't really work. Like, it could be more convenient, but not that it can make anything. Like, being, con like, something that's easy for you to do and something that can do anything is kind of, like, it may be the same, but, like, for example, but like, it isn't, it is it's similar but not the same thing, like, just because something is easier to do doesn't mean you can do anything. 
it's only specific to what that one specific task you want to do. So, the reason why normal weapons exist in this universe is mostly because it's uh, for the pe it's made by the people who basically like are not involved in this, or they just use old magic. Or the people who have old magic are just like, you recommend this to everyone. So, like, uh, the blacksmiths, they have to have a reason to exist. So, like, uh, maybe just before this drama even happened, like, people were just using the movies before this magic was discovered. But, however, when people, when the people are using all magic stuff to, like, right away some eyebrows over the new magic, they're just like, you, you know what, just use normal weapons or something. Because, uh, this, uh, because if they mainly use wands, like the old magic people normally use wands, right? So, they would recommend to use normal, normal, for the people who aren't witches to use normal means of protection. Instead of getting a terror spear. Because I imagine, like, if you were to get a terror spear, like, you don't really have to have any prior knowledge to magic in general. You can just take it and use it. That's what makes it convenient. You don't have to, like, you don't have to be, be a magic-related person or do this. And that's how they get you. Because if you wanna, if you wanna fight better, if you don't wanna, you, like, use, like, as a weapon and carry it around, you can just use a terror spear. You can, like, do it where you can drop whatever weapon. weapon you want. So, there's a lot of ways to make this more interesting. Like, I actually don't understand why you would need a budget to get these beautiful ideas that you can just come out for five seconds. Like, what were the writers were smoking in that room? Because, like, uh, it's concerning how they aren't able to establish very interesting plots and make it make sense of the plot and make the characters more interesting. As for the art department, you guys really, like, like... The person who's drawing or originally designed this really need to be, like link everything back to each other and make the themes fit with one another and uh, make it be suited for a mature audience. Like, what show did you want this to be for if you wanted it for mature audiences? Anyway, that's enough rambling. I had fun drawing these, these characters and uh, it really helped me like uh, d do more art studies and... Uh, like, made me take a break from my comic-obsessed life, and, uh, I really like how these illustrations turned out. But, I still don't like the show, I will never, I will never recommend it to anyone, and I personally tell you, if you're writing a story, you need to learn from the show. Just like, uh, Guardian HQ said, it's a great lesson to learn for any beginning writers. Then you can do it. Bye. See you in the next video.